In part one of the primates of Costa Rica, we took a look at the two smaller monkey species that can be found in the Asa Peninsula, the relatively common and famously intelligent white-faced capuchin and the endangered Central American squirrel monkey. In this second part, we will be learning about two much larger primate species, Geoffrey spider and mantled howler monkeys. While many people have heard of spider and howler monkeys in some capacity, I would say that there isn't much public knowledge about these species beyond their trademark feature of either lanky form or loud noises. Before traveling to Costa Rica myself, I knew very little else about these primates, but as you will soon discover, there is much more to these animals than bizarre anatomy or unusual vocalizations. In the two weeks or so that I was living in the rainforest, I saw every monkey species except for mantled howler monkeys up close and personal on at least two occasions. I don't know if this was because they were truly that rare, or if it was a function of their tendency to stay very high in the canopy, but for whatever reason, these were the most elusive primates of the trip. While I often heard their booming voices resounding throughout the jungle in the early mornings and at random times throughout the day, I had only caught brief glimpses of these animals until the second to last day that I was stationed in the wilderness. I was actually searching for snakes around the base of a large tree, when I heard a branch break above my head and looked up to see a whole troop of howl monkeys lounging noiselessly in the trees right above me. My first instinct after seeing them was actually to backpedal a few feet away to where I felt safer. These are the largest primate species by body mass in Costa Rica, with adult males standing well over 2 feet tall and weighing upwards of 22 pounds. They were able to maintain such large body sizes by doing exactly what you see in this video, lounging around and eating. Unlike the other primates we've discussed so far, howler monkeys are primarily folivorous, meaning the majority of their diets are composed of tree leaves rather than fruits during most times of the year. This diet allows them to survive in a wider variety of habitats than some of the other monkey species we've mentioned, as leaves are relatively abundant in the tropical and forested regions that these animals call home. Interestingly, this dietary preference and associated lifestyle may also be part of the reason that howler monkeys develop their distinct call, allowing them to locate other troops without having to expend nearly any energy. Let's talk more about this distinct noise. Able to be heard from miles away in some instances, this series of grunts and roars is made possible thanks to a hollow hyoid bone, which is located beside the vocal cords and amplifies the vibrations that they produce. While most other animals, including humans, have some variation of this bone, the structure is around 25 times as large in howler monkeys as the similarly sized spider monkey. But howlers don't always howl to communicate with one another. In fact, these monkeys frequently employ chemical signals to transmit information, as once again, this allows them to expend as little energy as possible. One of the most common methods of chemical signaling is to rub their urine on twigs, bark, leaves, and their own body if confronted with an uncomfortable social situation. See, Mom, I told you it's not just me. Hey, wait, is this mic still on? For me, the most interesting part of howler monkeys is not their call, but their social structure. Most troops consist of one alpha male, a select few lower-ranking males, and many females. Only the alpha is allowed to breed and produce offspring, and he will do so as often as possible throughout the year. Young howler monkeys will cling to their mother's chest and then back for the first three months or so of life and then learn to move and feed on their own until about one and a half years of age. At this point, the vast majority of young are either kicked out of the troop or leave on their own, and must join or create a new troop in order to survive. This helps spread the genetics of the young monkey's original alpha male to a new geographic location. There is also a dark side to their social structure. When a new alpha takes over a troop, he will often kill all current infants to force females to re-enter estrus so that he can breed with them. 
Between this behavior and other natural causes of death for infants, only about a third of all howler monkeys born will live longer than one year. From an ecological perspective, howler monkeys are important for a variety of reasons. Most prominently, they are critically important as germinators in seed dispersers for many plant species, effectively providing seeds with a fertilizer boost and spreading them to new locations. Also, howler monkey feces seems to be a preferred food source for dung beetles, which I unfortunately did not get to see on this trip. While howler monkeys are obviously pretty incredible animals, they were not my favorite species of primate from Costa Rica. That prize goes to the next species we will be covering in this video, the Geoffrey's spider monkey. These ended up being my favorites for many different reasons, but right off the bat, I was thoroughly impressed by the lanky bodies and fluid movements that give these monkeys their name. Although they can weigh up to around 20 pounds at max size, only a few pounds less than the mantled howler monkeys, these primates were anything but sedentary. In fact, I rarely saw them stop moving. Troops of these monkeys would leap, crawl, and, of course, swing through the canopy at all times of day, only stopping for a bite to eat or when it was time for bed at night. These are actually the only of the four monkeys on the Osa Peninsula that truly swing from branch to branch, whereas all of the others resort to crawling and jumping. To aid with their swinging, this species has actually lost its opposable thumb through evolution, and instead has four very long and strong fingers made for gripping branches. But their incredible athleticism and ease of movement through the treetops is only the beginning of what makes this my favorite primate. Of all the animals that I observed during my time in Costa Rica, none were quite as curious about me as the spider monkeys. Any time that I was lucky enough to encounter these animals while they were being relatively still, as soon as one individual took notice of me, the entire troop was very soon made aware of my presence, and they would presumably take turns making jokes about my nakedness and lack of climbing ability while munching down on an afternoon snack. A spider monkey's intelligence is no joke, however. Some studies have concluded that these are actually the third most intelligent non-human primate on the planet, only placing behind chimpanzees and orangutans. This makes them the smartest monkeys in the world, and while researchers aren't exactly sure why this is, it may be correlated with the need for these animals to memorize and recognize edible fruits and the locations of these food sources. Speaking of edible fruit, this makes up about 80% of a spider monkey's diet, but they will also dine on leaves, bark, seeds, and insects. This means that to an even greater degree than howler monkeys, this species is critically important for the seed dispersal of fruit-bearing trees, and are able to consume more fruit and therefore spread more seeds than the smaller squirrel or capuchin monkeys. Another interesting tidbit about the ecological niche of these monkeys is that natural predation has never been documented, although it has been hypothesized that their natural predators include big cats and possibly large snakes. Compared to the aforementioned howler monkeys, spider monkey social life is much less tense. These animals live in large troops of 20 to 40 individuals whose home ranges can exceed 2,000 acres, and often split off into smaller foraging groups during the day. Each large group has a relatively even ratio of males to females, and there is no designated alpha male that has exclusive breeding rights. Young spider monkeys will nurse for the first year of their life, but even after they are weaned, they usually stay with their natal troop for a few years. At about four years old, females are considered mature and will leave the troop to join another, but males will actually remain with their natal troop throughout their entire lives. This creates a very unique social dynamic and in which related male monkeys develop much closer bonds among themselves than they do with the unrelated females a phenomenon which is pretty much unheard of in the animal kingdom. Spider monkeys often reinforce these bonds by grooming each other for ticks and other parasites, behavior which is the equivalent of humans exchanging back scratches. Unfortunately, these absolutely incredible organisms are listed as an endangered species 
due to the destruction of the rainforest habitats that they call home. With very large home ranges and diets that are reliant on the diverse and numerous fruits available from mature trees, these monkeys simply cannot adapt fast enough to thrive in fragmented forests, let alone urban or agricultural areas. Effective conservation methods are also difficult to develop due to a paucity of data about how this species utilizes habitat corridors. In fact, studying the movement patterns of this species as individuals moved in and out of a national park through a more developed area of Costa Rica was one of the main primate research goals of the station that I was volunteering at. If you are interested in learning more about the conservation of this species, I definitely recommend checking out the links in the description of this video for more information. Well everyone, that's just about it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the Mantle Tower and Geoffrey Spider Monkey. If you did enjoy, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video, and consider subscribing to my channel for more educational wildlife content coming every other Saturday morning. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.